Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mono White Angels deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a couple new cards from Streets of New Capenna, and the most important one by far is Jada, Font of Hope, a 2-mana 2-2 Legendary Angel with Flying and Vigilance, which can tap to add white mana that we can only spend to cast an Angel spell, so it's a very unique ability for white to let us generate mana like this. And then each other angel we control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel we already control, so it can very quickly get out of hand and incentivizes us to play a ton of angels in our deck. Then another new addition is Inspiring Overseer, 3 mana 2 1 flyer that when it enters it gains 1 life and draws a card. And at 6 mana I'm also playing the full playset of Sanctuary Warden. A 5 5 flyer enters with 2 shield counters on it, meaning if a permanent with a shield counter on it would be dealt damage or destroyed, remove a shield counter from it instead, so it gives it a nice bit of built in protection, great against control decks where angels can oftentimes struggle. And whenever the Warden enters a battlefield or attacks, we may remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker we control, and if we do, draw a card and make a 1 1 token. So we can potentially remove one of those two shield counters right away to draw a card, make a 1 1 token. Also, great synergy with the plus 1 counters from Jada and the ones from Youthful Valkyrie, which we can also remove to draw cards and generate tokens instead. Then we also have the full playset of Starnheim Aspirant in our deck, giving all our angels a 2 mana discount, very helpful in casting a turn 4 Sanctuary Warden, or even a Valkyrie Harbinger, the 4 5 Flying Lifelink, generating 4 4 angel tokens with Flying and Vigilance if we gained 4 or more life by the end of our turn. And then the dream sequence in this deck is playing a turn 2 Jada, turn 3 Starnheim Aspirant, still allowing us to play a 3 mana Angel in the very same turn, like our Inspiring Overseer or a Righteous Valkyrie, of course another staple in these Angel decks, gaining a life whenever an Angel or Cleric enters a battlefield equal to its toughness, and if we get to 27 or more life, our team gets a plus 2, plus 2 bonus. Also great with the plus 1 counters from Jada, allowing us to gain even more life with the Righteous Valkyrie, and can also enable the Valkyrie Harbinger right away to create 4-4 four, four Angel tokens. Then at 2 mana we've got the full set of Youthful Valkyrie, a 1-3 flyer, picking up plus 1 counters whenever another Angel enters the battlefield under our control. And at 4 mana we've got a pair of Legion Angels with another 2 copies in the sideboard to search up when it enters the battlefield, great with a discount from Aspirant as well. And then in terms of interaction, full playset of March as a flexible removal spell can pitch some white cards to give it a mana discount, great with Legion Angel, and also nice with Emirios Call, which can function as a land or a 7 mana sorcery making a pair of angel tokens, and also white card we can pitch to March. And then also three copies of Doomscar as a nice catch-up mechanism against some more aggressive decks can foretell it. The opponent might even think that it's a Starnheim Unleashed, which is also commonly played card in Angel decks. And then we can get them with a Doomscar, and then we can eventually take over with our powerful late game. The Warden also protected from Doomscar thanks to the shield counter. And the reason we didn't splash black in this deck for cards like the Retribution, the powerful 4-mana enchantment, is that cards like Aspirants and Jada really incentivize us to play Angels as opposed to enchantments, which don't benefit from the same discount. And then in our mana base we also have the full set of Cave of the Frost Dragon and two copies of Crawling Barons as creature lands. Don't want to go overboard on the Colos lands, especially in case we play Aspirant, and then thanks to the discount we might be able to play multiple double white angels in the same turn, and then the Colos lands will hurt us. And then we've got 16 planes and an Igancho as additional interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty nice hand. Good mix of interaction for creature decks and then a nice start of our own with our angel synergies. Don't think I'll be needing Emirius Call as a seven mana sorcery against Mono White Aggro. Doomscar is going to be one of our key cards. Could also try and block with a Youthful Valkyrie early on. I think this is still probably my best bet. If they play Thalia, they can delay Doomscar by turn, but at least they cannot take it with Elite Spellbinder. Ignition pumps Adversary. Okay. I think I'm fine with uh, 2 for 1 here. And then next turn, double Valkyrie or Jada into Valkyrie. Looks good. Jada sets up Harbinger on the following turn. 
any opponent playing a Brutal Cathar without any targets, maybe thinking we're a more controlling deck than we actually are. So, Valkyrie into Janna gives us a counter. Although I guess other way around also would have worked, thanks to Janna's ability. Portable hole, probably getting rid of Janna here. Nope, goes for Valkyrie, so Brutal Cathar has an easier time attacking, or I guess they can get rid of both. Alright, opponent's empty-handed, and we still have a Valkyrie Harbinger in hand, now Sanctuary Warden as well. So just need to survive one more attack, and then we should be able to stabilize. We'll take four. And I think I prefer Warden just to make an extra token. Keep the cards flowing. And uh, I'll remove a shield counter over a plus one counter for now. But next time we can maybe remove a plus one counter instead. So we should be stable at 5, got a bit of life gain coming in. Aspirants can pump one of their creatures. But we would just be trading a shield counter for a Brutal Cathar. Seems like a good deal. Opponent goes for it. Reconsiders and passes. Okay, so can attack first if I'd like. Send in the Warden, removing a plus one counter from Valkyrie. Main concern here is another Angel Fire Ignition giving a big Brutal Cathar Trample, so that's what we need to kind of protect ourselves against. But we should have enough toughness and lifelink here to stay alive. Next turn we can double spell. Or maybe just play double Legion Angel. Alright, they actually top decked Ignition. So that's an 8-8 Brutal Cathar. So let's see here. I can jump with Valkyrie, take 4 down to 1. And then next turn we have to figure out a way to survive the incoming attack. But Harbinger gaining 4, making another token is going to be a good starting point. So I'll try this. March, also the perfect answer now. Okay, so we got to keep up 4 mana, or I guess use the discount. But uh, Legion Angel... Seems good. Get another copy. Opponent's gonna be a little suspicious here of us keeping up for mana instead of playing out our Legion Angel. And then now maybe remove a shield counter, make another token draw card. And wait for them to replay Ignition. Welcoming Vampire first. That's fine. Serpo not going for Ignition. Can just jump the Brutal Cathar. And keep March in hand for now. Could also triple block it. Have quite a few options. Yeah, I guess a triple block makes Ignition a lot less threatening. And I can maybe tap out without needing to keep up March. Seems fine. I think we've got control of this game, so just need to make sure it doesn't slip away. Damage happens. Get to untap. Legion Angel the draw. So maybe start with an Overseer. And 
and then we can attack with our large angels. No counters to remove, sadly. And I can still play another Legion Angel, keep up March for X equals 3. March also good synergy with Legion Angel. Adlin, that's fine. Good synergy with Welcoming Vampire once it starts making more tokens. So, could consider exiling Welcoming Vampire, although then Angel Fire Ignition on Adlin could be a problem, unless we can just straight up kill our opponent next turn, which I guess we can. So, X equals 3. Pitch Angel, XL Vampire. And that should seal the deal. And our opponent agrees. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands would have been promising with an extra land or two, as is. Cannot really keep. Okay, we'll try this. And then, I guess, uh, get rid of Youthful. Hope for Jada into double Righteous Valkyrie. Opponent on a white deck. Looks like maybe enchantments. Think Jada still the play. Naturalists plus maybe another two man enchantment here. Ooh, nice aspirants. That's the dream. So now we can attack for two, play Aspirant, and still play a three drop. And Righteous Valkyrie looks good. Enters with a counter. And next turn, if uh, our opponent doesn't remove anything, we can certainly combo off. Touch the Spirit Realm, takes care of Righteous Valkyrie. And a Rune of Might. Okay. So we're still doing okay here. Reign of Truth. Opponent gets to attack for quite a bit of lifelink damage. So kick things off. Probably with Righteous Valkyrie. Then Youthful. Then Overseer. And attack for 4. And we're back up to 22. Got some large angels. Could maybe block the naturalists. Borrow time. So yeah, opponent's got quite a bit of interaction here, sadly. And do I want a double block? I think I actually do. I guess it would be a triple block. So I would lose Jada, Youthful Valkyrie. Maybe it's not worth it at that point. Alright, I'll take it. Ooh, Amiria's Call. Not close to casting it, so might be better off playing it as a land. This still gains a bit of life. And then... Opponent's at 30. Yeah, I mean, I can still double block Naturalists, technically. Want to double block with Aspirant instead of Jada. Opponent passes and a march, an excellent draw. So now we might be able to get more aggressive. This also deals with enchantments, so I could get back Righteous Valkyrie. If that comes down, would enter with, uh, let's see, three counters. So we would gain seven life, not quite enough to pump our team by two. 
but we're getting close. So, yeah, we'll attack with our flyers. And then keep up march at instant speed. Katilda, that's also kind of a must answer. 7-7 seven, seven, flying lifelink. Portrait attacks. So we have two approaches. We can just go for Katilda. Or we can try and free a righteous Valkyrie. Would shrink down portrait down to a 5-5. Five, five. And then I would have a 5-powered Righteous Valkyrie. So that could just eat a portrait. That is tempting, actually. And then if we draw an Angel, we're in business. Crawling Baron's not bad, but could have been better. So I can still attack with my 5-7s, or maybe only one, keep the other one back on defense. What if I attack with everyone? They can block, let's say, Righteous Valkyrie, take 12 but gain 5. So I'll just send a Righteous Valkyrie here. And then next turn we can maybe attack with all. Another Reign of Truth. Pumps Naturalists. Which attacks. Okay, so let's say I animate Crawling Barons. Go for a triple block. Or a quadruple block in this case. Keep my life total high so we can top deck to pump the team. And then they can decide what to take out, I guess. Or I can not block with Crawling Barons. Eh, probably still worth it. They can choose. Get to keep useful Valkyrie. And a Doomscar, not exactly what we wanted. So now if I were to attack with all my creatures, they block there, take 12, gain 4. Not ideal. Can maybe send in one Valkyrie. Or I can just take the hits and attack with both 5-7s. And then if they attack, they don't have it on defense. Sure. Might as well foretell. Although keeping it in hand could still synergize with March, so that's a reason not to foretell it. Another companion. Pumps Katilda. Ranger class. Could always decide to jump with Jada to keep our life total high. But if our opponent attacks, let's say they gain 10, they would still be dead on the way back. And this is a cleric, so we'll trigger Valkyrie times 2, so it gets us to 27, and that's the magic number. Now we can finally attack with everyone. So a pretty nice grindy game here against green-white enchantments. But uh, yeah, instant speed march, freeing one of our Valkyries paid off. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand is actually not too bad. Against creature decks, we have double Doomscar. We have two lands, essentially. And then against grindier matchups, double Overseer could be a nice start. Should be able to pick up another land. Turn one, initiate. So now we face the decision of, do we play Jada, or do we maybe want to wipe the board first before committing more angels to the board? Green-whites, Aspirants. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Doomscar. Since this kind of start could easily overpower our good angel start as well. 
If they play Thalia, we may not be able to Doomscar just yet, but then they're also overextending into it. Take four. And our opponent passes, very much aware of a Doomscar. So, could just fire it off, could go for something a little different. I think I'm still fine just Doomscarring here. Clearing those two creatures. And then we'll see what they have in store for us next. Partners without a creature in play to pump. Not too threatening. So do we want to set up Doomscar number two? Or do we finally commit some angels to the board? Could go for Aspirant into Jada. Are we confident that we can take over the board with our angels? Partners is still a scary card, provides a ton of counters. So I could see the advantage of setting up a second Doomscar first. But of course our opponent's going to be aware of it. What if I just go Jada, Fortal Doomscar, and then we can reevaluate next turn? Might not be a terrible idea. And then if we feel like we need to wipe the board, we can. If not, we can continue with our Angel game plan without losing too much momentum. Brutal Cathar, perfect. That sets up our Doomscar even better. Opponent could also be thinking this is Starnheim Unleashed. So, can't blame them. But, uh, yeah, this should work out nicely. Doomscar get back Jada. Another Brutal Cathar. Picked up another Jada in the meantime. And I think it's time to unload with Aspirants. Might still want a Jada first so we can pick up some plus one counters instead of going double Overseer. And would love to pick up some of our six drops now. Sigarda, yeah, could still be kind of problematic. Let's see what we draw. Another Overseer. Let's keep chaining those together. And the Righteous Valkyrie, the Cherry on top. And then I could play Aspirant. Maybe should have tapped Jada to play Valkyrie, so I could play Cave and Aspirant here. Since Aspirant is a cleric which triggers Righteous Valkyrie. And then we'll just pass for now. Minsk, not a bad mana sink. Good at enabling Coven for Sigarda. And a Valor Stance actually deals with Valkyrie. Okay. Opponent is empty handed. And we still have a lot of good top decks, probably better top decks than our opponent at this point. So, do we want to attack? I'm kind of comfortable just staying back for now. We'll switch it to night time, so that's maybe a concern too, but not much I can do about it now. And then, let's say I do attack with one Overseer. Still have the other one back. I have to watch out for the trample here. Yeah, I think I'm hanging back. Put and draws a land. So yeah, this game could still slip away if we don't draw something good soon.
I'm just gonna send in the 7 7. And I'm probably forced to block it. I block like so. And like so. They can kill Overseer, one Aspirant. It's probably fine. There we go, Righteous Valkyrie to the rescue. And then we still have Cave we can activate. I think I still hang back for now. Opponent passes. Do I have any good attacks? Could send in Righteous Valkyrie. Have some other good creatures back on defense. I guess Overseer can attack. They can only pump with Minsk as a sorcery. Opponent goes for the trade. Maybe another cigar in hand would make sense. Thalia we don't care about. And Adversary. Okay, that can pump their team. So switches it back to daytime. So Brutal Cathar triggers. Which is probably why they were holding on to their creature. So Righteous Valkyrie down. Would love to draw removal now for Brutal Cathar. Still play Valkyrie. And then the skies are clear to start attacking. Do we send in Cave as well or keep that back? I think we attack with Cave as well. Hit him for eight. And then we're close to presenting a lethal for next turn. Another Cathar, it's painful. That opens up some more attacks for them. Fine trading aspirant for adversary. Another Valkyrie. Okay. Can still animate cave if we'd like. Can Overseer attack is a question. Do want to keep up some amount of pressure. Next turn they can pump with Minsk. Can maybe chump with Jada. Yeah, this is fine. Another adversary. Pump for two. Still doesn't enable any amazing attacks. Since they definitely can't afford to lose a Brutal Cathar. So our opponent passes. And there we go, March. Just what we needed. So Exile Brutal Cathar. Get back. Righteous Valkyrie and Jada. And our opponent explodes. Too much for them to overcome. About to gain a ton of life. Maybe even enough to pump the team by four. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with an okay hand, especially if we pick up a third and fourth land. With maybe turn four play Aspirant and a three mana Angel in the same turn. Facing Snow-Covered Swamp. 
not our ideal matchup if our opponent has a ton of sweepers. Especially with a hand that uh, has to commit a lot of creatures to the board. For now, I think Overseer first to make sure we hit our land drop, and then it feels much better to play Aspirant once we can make use of that discount in the same turn. Picked up a tapped cave, so that's a little awkward. Trespasser. So it looks like a black green midrange deck. Yeah, I mean, can play another Overseer if we want, can commit a Valkyrie, don't really mind if it gets removed, and if it doesn't, can maybe run away with the game. And then next turn could be a great Aspirant turn. Yep, Binding was to be expected, takes out Valkyrie. Another Aspirant, so... Could go for Inspiring Overseer. If we draw land, I can also play Righteous Valkyrie. Don't mind that. Opponent down to 8 in the meantime. Youthful Valkyrie putting in a ton of work. And double Righteous Valkyrie in hand can be pretty sweet. Not to mention a Sanctuary Warden to take over the late game. Massacre for two is unfortunate. Gains are putting some life back. At least we still have a youthful Valkyrie. And we still have a very nice turn lined up here. Aspirant into Valkyrie into another Valkyrie. And Meat Hook Massacre is not going to be able to catch up to my youthful Valkyrie anymore. Could still have a blood on the snow, given the snow mana. Trespasser has Death Touch, so probably don't want to double block it. Alright, they actually have the blood on the snow, so that's unfortunate. We'll need a land now for Sanctuary Warden. And we could actually end up losing this game, which felt pretty unlosable. Alright, that's a good draw. I think I need to draw here, get rid of one shield counter, keep the other. Warden could still die to Massacre, doesn't die to Blood on the Snow at least. Opponent attacks with Trespasser, maybe hoping to trade for the shield counter. I'll take it. And another Trespasser to play. Alright, need a good draw step. It's gonna be Invoke Despair. Psycho Token. Opponent draws two, and we're all the way down to five. Jada, the draw. Okay, so... Opponent doesn't have any creature lands at least. Can play Jada. Question is whether Warden wants to draw, remove its shield counter, or keep the shield counter around, hit for five, but yeah, we're still gonna end up losing to these Trespassers. I cannot simply pass a turn to activate Cave, because then these will transform. So I think that means attack, draw a card, and hope to draw something powerful. Well, Emira's Call will certainly help. We'll make my token indestructible. So now... Another Blood on the Snow or Massacre could still be painful. It's going to be a binding. Kills one angel. So that's probably what they had to maybe deal with Warden. And another Invoke Despair, ouch. So I think we're dead to the Meat Hook Massacre now. There are still creatures they can exile. 
And I'm gonna end up losing enough life to invoke despair. Yeah, very close game. And the back-to-back uh, -back sweepers got the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a very promising start. Jada into maybe Aspirin plus over Serial 3. That's kind of our dream start. Even have a march if needed. Although, not in a hurry to exile Eye Twitch. So, Black Red maybe Sacrifice, good feature of Nixilis. And at least her angels are good at pressuring a Planeswalker. So play Jada, hope it survives. If it doesn't survive, do I still play Aspirin next turn or do I wait? I'm not sure yet. Could see a deadly dispute here end of turn. We do not. Is it time for Obnixilus? I don't mind. As long as I get to untap with Jada. Can be a fatal grudge instead. Alright. So it forces us to sacrifice Jada now. Opponent gets to learn. Draw a card. So I could play Aspirant. If it gets to untap, I can play Warden next turn already. That's a pretty good incentive. And if not, we can play the grindy game with Overseer. Is this going to be the same Fatal Grudge again? Yep. Mascot Exhibition still pretty far away. And see if we pick up a tap land. We did. All right. Double March, probably not ideal in this matchup, but Double Warden should be quite strong. Especially with the 1-1 tokens protecting us from another Sacrifice effect. Predator we can exile, so that's not a problem. Jada the draw. Okay, so interesting question. Probably okay to let them keep Predator for a turn. If they have some sort of act of treason effect, I can still march by pitching, maybe a second march. And this way we are more likely to play Sanctuary Warden next turn, thanks to the extra mana. Predator attacks. And we'll take four. Could also be Meadog Massacre in our future. Just environmental sciences. And our opponent passes. Alright, so might as well attack first and then play a warden. Then I guess I can tap Jada. In case we pick up another tap land. A 7 7 Sanctuary Warden. Probably okay to remove a shield counter. Could also remove a plus one counter. Um, yeah, let's go with one shield for now. Pass it back. Mascot Exhibition, that's fine.
predator attacks. So I could march, pitching Jada and another march to exile predator. Could just take it. How close are we to just killing the opponents? Not quite next turn, but we're getting close. Yeah, I guess we'll take it for now. Could also march one of the tokens while we can. Let's say the Inkling. So it cannot trade for my angels. So we still spend our mana here. And then playing another Sanctuary Warden could be good. If we're afraid of a Meat Hook Massacre. Could take a different approach, although I guess it would be large enough to um, potentially survive. Could also block with Warden to just remove the shield counter, force him to sacrifice a creature. Doesn't seem worth it. Emirio's Call, also promising, and also good synergy with March as a white card we can pitch. So, could start by attacking with Sanctuary Warden. Guess there's no harm in that. And then remove, let's say, a plus one counter, although then Massacre for six could kill it. So might want to play this Warden first, although then again might want to tap Jada for mana. So kind of complicated here. I guess it's okay to miss out on two damage to guarantee having access to March. And then Warden, when it attacks, can remove maybe a shield counter or a plus one counter from the second Warden. So that enters, this removes one shield counter, picked up a land, and then I can attack. Removing a plus one counter from the second Sanctuary Warden, so we don't lose it to a Massacre. And then I can march Predator by pitching Emirius Call and Jada if needed, although I don't think it will be. So Predator attacks. So what's the main concern here? Not quite sure. But yeah, Massacre would gain them a bunch of life. Would it be enough to survive? Blocking is also reasonable at this point. Let's see if there's a response. Because I don't need the shield counter for Warden to survive Massacre. Since they're not playing snow lands, I'm not afraid of uh, blood on the snow. So that happens. And Warden still a 7-7, seven, seven. so minus 6 is not enough. And that Massacre would also deal with the Predator, so we don't have to waste our march. It's going to be a deadly dispute, opponent goes digging. And they seem pretty dead on board. So yeah, very much possible they had a Meat Hook Massacre in hand, but it just didn't line up the way they wanted to. So showing off the power of shield counters and our 6-drop as a nice card draw engine. So yeah, we got to see our Angel deck in action, and overall quite happy with how it turned out. Definitely took some tinkering and fine-tuning, going from a more all-in aggro version to a slightly more controlling build with a few copies of Doomscar to kind of give us a catch-up mechanism against the very aggressive decks, especially when we're on the draw and we may not be able to quite keep up with their aggressive start. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.